Revelation 2327, from the 7th and 8th of May 1942. God's Will or Permission Free Will God's will is decisive for every happening in the world, even if it has human will as its cause. Only what God wants or what he allows can happen or be carried out, and yet the human being is responsible for his will. God knows both the human being's will since eternity and also the effect of it, yet he does not prevent people from putting their will into action, yet his will also intervenes in accordance with these deeds so that the salvation of the soul can be promoted as a result. Earthly events usually also have earthly effects, and that God allows these earthly effects is often incomprehensible to people. God's concern, however, is for people's souls. Where they are in danger he intervenes, but only in such a way that people's will nevertheless remains untouched. He does not prevent them from carrying out their deeds even though they are evil, that is only born of unkindness. And this makes people doubt the existence of a God of love, wisdom and omnipotence. But a violent intervention will let them doubt this existence just as much for as long as they don't realize that people's freedom of will may not be curtailed if they are to become what their destiny is, they will also not understand that God's intervention is only necessary for the sake of spiritual development, for again they will only consider earthly events and their effect on earthly life. However, it is always divine will that everything that happens can somehow benefit the soul, thus that, although the body is in danger, the soul can remain unharmed or derive great spiritual advantages from it, depending on its will. God's love for his living creations is so great that he would truly not let anything happen which would hinder people's ascent, which is the meaning and purpose of earthly life. But on the other hand he also leaves every opportunity for the opposing force to develop so that free will can decide for itself. If this free will is turned towards evil, he will nevertheless not make the human being unfree because this would be against divine order. However, in accordance with this will turned towards evil he now allows what this will has caused to take effect. And the earthly effects must indeed be extremely painful if they are to result in spiritual progress otherwise humanity would not learn to detest evil and would increasingly fall prey to this power. People's spiritual state is decisive if and when God himself intervenes and puts an end to the working of the evil forces. If people's will turns to God, then the power of evil is broken and he finds no place where he can work successfully. God does not hinder it, but people themselves can hinder it, and consequently they themselves, through their approval or rejection, promote or hinder what happens. God's will can never be bad deeds but they can only be carried out if his will does not oppose them. And thus he allows what people's will causes themselves, so that they will change their will themselves through the effect and thus come closer to their actual goal, that is turn to God. Yet this does not exclude God's intervention if he deems it necessary. For there are also limits to the activity of the evil power which it may not transgress. If, however, human will is still turned towards him, then the divine intervention will also have an extremely painful earthly effect on people, for again it is the soul which is in danger and which shall be liberated through this intervention. Hence, if only world events and their effect on earthly life are taken into account it will hardly be acknowledged by people that God's will is decisive, and consequently God will be rejected by those who do not grant earthly life a deeper meaning and purpose because they cannot recognize a wise and loving guidance which wants to achieve an approach to itself through suffering and tribulation while respecting people's freedom of will. Amen.